Good morning. Welcome to this great day. Please be seated. Please be seated. What a fantastic day. Welcome to the Olin Business School's undergraduate recognition ceremony. I'm Kurt Dirks, the Bank of America Professor of Leadership and the co-director of uh, Olin's Bauer Leadership Center. I served as dean during the first half of your senior year, and Dean Taylor had asked me to represent uh, him and the school today. He is attending another important uh, ceremony today, which is his son's wedding, which is taking place in England. So, couldn't be here with us, but I know he has sent his uh, heartiest congratulations to uh, all of our graduates and to their families. This event complements our university-wide commencement and allows us to recognize the individual accomplishments of our undergraduates in the company of family and friends. The ceremony is being live streamed and recorded for those family and friends who could not be with us today. So if you're online, uh, thank you for joining us. This class of 2017 will forever hold a special place in the history of the Olin Business School. You are members of the centennial class celebrating 100 years of business education at Washington University. That first graduating class had uh, 10 members, nine men, one woman. And so as you think about what's changed since then, how much uh, bigger of a school we are, how much more diverse we are, and how great our programs have become. In fact, as, um, as many of you know, we rank the, the number one program in the country this year by Poets and Quants. So I think you have centennial towels. You can wave those whenever you want, including now. So uh, to get started, I'd like to share some wisdom with you from George and Carol Bauer. George and Carol are benefactors and longtime friends of Washington University. George is also a WashU alumnus. I know you have undoubtedly spent many hours in Bauer Hall, whether it's attending classes, whether it's talking to faculty, or whether it's standing in line at Starbucks. And I know I stood in line uh, behind most of you, maybe all at the same time at one point. But, but uh, <clears throat> the Bowers really uh, have been generous founders, but also brought us much wisdom. And I'd like just to share a few things uh, with you about their wisdom that they provided. They know that uh, <clears throat> training and nurturing of our students to be strong ethical leaders is one of the most important tasks that we have as a business school and one of the most important challenges we have facing society. And it's the primary reason they've endowed the Bauer Leadership Center. George uh, shared with me the kind of the four qualities he thinks about when he looks for a leader, and I'll encourage you to think about these as you start to develop your own, or continue actually to develop your own leadership capabilities and capacities. The number one criteria he looks for is integrity. So he says, if you can't trust the person, you probably shouldn't be working with them. And he also has this interesting saying that it may be legal, but it ain't Aristotle, and uh, to keep that in mind. The second, intellectual curiosity which is really the ability to see a problem or an issue and continue to uh, dig down. That intellectual curiosity is what brought you here to Washington University, and we hope that you will continue to maintain that. Number three, energy. As he says, very few organizations acquire greatness or drive forward without a high level of energy on the part of their leadership, and that holds true also for those individuals in their careers. And then the fourth one is experience. And George is not talking about deep uh, or substantial experience in terms of years, but really is going out, getting your hands dirty, and learning from that experience and developing and continuing to do that for your entire career as you move forward. So as you prepare to leave your undergraduate life as honest, bright, energetic adults with diverse experiences, we know that you have what it takes to become leaders in the 21st century. Wherever your path may lead, we are counting on you to act with integrity, Remain curious, expand your knowledge, and grow from your experiences. These are the ingredients for successful leadership and more importantly, for personal success. As graduates, you form an important link between the generations of students who have come before and all those that will follow you. You will be the ambassadors for Washington University and wherever you go now as an alumni. Your connection to each other and the university connects you to thousands of Washington University alumni around the world. 
These connections to the past, the present, and the future are really the essence of our traditions and what it means to be a graduate of this great institution. To parents, grandparents, family, and friends, you have encouraged and sustained the graduates we honor today. We all thank you for your support. Will the graduating students please stand and join me in applauding your family and friends who have been there for you as you have worked to earn your degree. Thank you. Please be seated. And now I'm pleased to introduce the members of Owens faculty who are with us today. They too are proud of each one of you. Owens faculty include some of the brightest minds in academia who are internationally distinguished in their fields. They are inspiring faculty who are passionate about teaching and scholarship, and they take tremendous satisfaction in passing on their knowledge and wisdom to our students. Faculty, please stand or remain standing as I call your name. Audience, I'll just ask you to hold your applause until all the faculty have been introduced. Jane Kai, Petch Kolotat, Cynthia Kreider, Jennifer Duclos, Ignacio Espanda, Mike Gordonier, Todd Gormley, Mahendra Gupta, Greg Hutchings, Constantina Kiosis, Yvonne Lapuka, Zwadi Lamayan, Glenn McDonald, David Meyer, Bernardo Severa, Ellie Sneer, Stacy Thomas, Danko Tursik. I'd also like to welcome two special guests, one from the School of Law, Michael Colby. Professor Colby, his son, is joining us today, is graduating today with our class. Also, Professor Pratim Biswa from the School of Engineering, his son, is also joining us today. Please join me in applauding and thanking our outstanding old faculty. By the way, please stay in touch with your faculty. Please sit. Uh, please stay in touch with your faculty. I know they love to hear from you. I can say that as a faculty member myself, and we are your, your faculty for life. I'd also like to introduce and recognize our tremendous staff. On the stage representing our staff are Steve Malter, Associate Dean and Director of Undergraduate Programs. Please stand. <laughs> Paige LaRose, Assistant Dean, Director of Student Affairs and Strategic Initiatives. And Chris Presley, our academic advisor. In addition, if you, to the staff members you see on stage, many more are here today helping to make this a special day. From the day you arrived as freshmen until today and beyond, Olin staff works tirelessly to help guide you and provide you that individual care and attention which we at Olin subscribe to. Will all of our Olin attendants and staff today please stand to be recognized? It is now my privilege to introduce our speaker, Alex Borchard. Alex is the Managing Director of Investments for Altus Properties, which is a private equity real estate investment firm headquartered here in St. Louis. He was sitting in your seats in 2006, just 11 years ago. In addition to a successful career, Alex is currently president of the Olin Business School Alumni Board, and he's also very active in the St. Louis community as a United Way board member, and co-chairing the Young Professionals Campaign for United Way of Great St. Louis. His wife, Dana Borcher, is also here and has also been involved in uh, the community likewise. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Alex. Thank you, Kurt. I'm gonna take one second to get set up here. I didn't bring the binder, I bought the, brought the iPad, so. Thanks, Professor Dirks. Distinguished faculty, guests, parents, and alumni, welcome. It's an honor and quite a humbling experience to be talking with you today. Well, here you are. Congratulations to all of you. What a tremendous accomplishment you've achieved simply by making it here today. Just imagine trying to sum up all the late nights, the tireless weekends, 
the seemingly insurmountable decisions you've navigated, and the ever-inflating costs you've incurred to earn your right to sit here today. Of course, I'm talking about the parents right now. <laughs> so congratulations again to the parents. It has to be a proud and fun day for all of you. But seriously, graduates, think about that for one moment. So much has gone right, and you've sacrificed and worked so hard to earn your right into this room. You've overcome a vast amount of hurdles required to get into WashU, let alone graduate from a school the caliber of WashU. Please don't let that get to your ego, though. It's easy. <laughs> I'd like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to all of you. I couldn't be more thrilled for you. And once again, I'm humbled to be able to speak with you a few minutes today. And I promise to make it short and hopefully a little bit sweet. As Professor Dirks mentioned, I'm Alex Borchard, a fellow alum from the class of uh, 2006. I guess a, a, an almost fellow alum, if I can wrap this thing up quickly and let you get your diplomas. I also have the privilege of serving as the president of the Olin Alumni Board. In short, that means we're just about an hour away from when I can start peppering you with WashU alumni mailings. And believe me, with WashU, the amount of mail you're about to receive monthly, weekly, and even daily is going to make you want to change your address, as I'm sure your parents can attest. I have placed a great deal of thought into my remarks today once Dean Taylor invited me to speak. To be honest, a lot of it focused on how the heck I could get out of this so I don't embarrassingly tumble. But if, every of you, if any of you have ever tried to say no to our new Dean, Mark Taylor, with that British accent, that perfectly coiffed hair, and that immensely impressive resume, his requests are not requests, they are challenges, and challenge accepted, so here I am. In my firm, I start all of our meetings with a simple statement of this meeting will be successful if. So in that light, this talk, which is only going to be about 45 minutes, 12 minutes, will be successful if, one, you stay awake, two, one or two of you learn from one or two of the five values that I've come to truly respect in my career and my personal life. And third, I leave you confident that WashU's value doesn't end at this graduation. You've been here only four years and you've gained a lot of value. You'll be an alum for decades to come and the value only gets better. I have placed a lot of thought into what advice that I can personally, Alex Borchin, can personally provide you that you may not be able to receive from many of your surely successful and more seasoned mentors and parents. Well, my answer is a recent and thus relative perspective. As Professor Dirks mentioned, I was sitting in those chairs just 11 years ago. Since then, I've been faced with many challenges, as you'll be, experienced heartbreaking failures that at the time I never thought I'd bounce back from which I hope you'll experience as well. And I've somehow figured out a way to achieve peace and purpose in my current career, personal and philanthropic life. I imagine all I can hope to achieve today is to offer you a few guiding principles, five again to be exact, that I apply now in my personal and professional lives that more importantly, I wish I was more conscious of when I was sitting in your seats 11 years ago. Hopefully something sticks. So here's where the expected platitudes start beginning. Life's trajectory post-graduation is not linear, like it was prior to graduation. Goals are foggy. Success isn't measured by tests and grade reports. From this day forward, it becomes up to you to personally define what success and fulfillment means to you individually, and then work hard to enjoy the bumpy ride that's required to keep going. Also, the feeling of success and fulfillment are relative and fleeting for everyone. You have to work to constantly redefine it for yourself, focus on achieving it, and fight for it. It is impossible to predict where you or I will be 30 years, 20 years, or even 10 years from now in our careers or in our lives. Or at least I hope that's an impossibility for all of us. Whether in your personal lives, your business careers, failures are eminent, desires will change, and doors will close and open from nowhere. Don't try to predict your long-term future and death, drip, death grip that trajectory like I did when I started my career. It takes too much wasted energy, and it'll surely cause you to miss out on unforeseen opportunities if you're simply fighting to hold on to a predetermined path. Recent and thus relatable perspective, that's what I'm offering today. 
A very quick bit about my state of mind at graduation 11 years ago and my transition into the real world before I get to the final five uh, values. I went to Olin to become an investment banker. I spent almost every Friday of my senior year grabbing random business people in St. Louis for breakfast and lunch to just pick their brain on their careers and their thoughts. One of those random lunches towards the end of my senior year made me jump ship from my iBanking into a real estate development company, a boutique real estate development company headquartered here in St. Louis. It caused months of extreme anxiety for me, as it meant I'd be taking a job at far less pay than my fellow finance classmates entering the large iBanking world, which what I was going to enter just months previous. The decision honestly devastated me for, for months. It felt like I was committing to my entire future and that I'd never recover if it didn't work out that first year. In hindsight, that is foolish thinking in and of itself. There are an extremely few amount of logically applied decisions that you can't bounce back from if they fail. Or even better, learn from those failures and grow stronger and more successful than you were before taking them. Anyway, I went with the likely the lowest base salary of my peers sitting with me at graduation on the promise by good people with high integrity of two things. One, an opportunity to learn from principles, and two, simply a handshake agreement that if I performed well, they'd grant me some portion of ownership of projects and investments that I'd have my hands in. The problem was at the time, those couldn't be quantified, and WashU and finance was all about quantification. The decision somehow made me feel lesser than the folks I was sitting with at graduation, as I knew salaries they were signing up for, I knew salaries I was giving up. I was too concerned at the time with what direction they were going with versus what I wanted to go with. And this is my favorite part of today, as I'm sure you, uh, you, you may appreciate. I was graduating knowing all this with this extreme anxiety, knowing that it was against the constant prodding of my dad to accept offers at large at corporate forums, which, are, which is a great path, by the way. Now, I respect my dad's guidance more than anyone on earth, and he's actually here with us today. It's in jest. Slightly. But I love you, Dad, and I respect your guidance, but somehow I'm up here giving a commencement speech at Olin. So I must have done something right with that decision 11 years ago. <laughs> and Dad, we've certainly done something right together over the last 33 years. I can never thank you enough for your guidance, support, and love. I love you. Anyway, I took the job based purely on my gut instinct at the time against all logical reasoning. Long story short, it worked out better than I ever could have imagined. Last little story. I've since worked for two other fantastic firms, which have, for reasons beyond my understanding, offered me positions that even then I was doubtful I could ever achieve or conquer, but something they saw made them offer me the position. I went for them, and I fought for success hard. Each move was a personal decision that I truly struggled with, the move to my current firm, which I could not be more proud to call part of my own, literally brought me to tears, as it meant leaving a firm where I had earned a comfortable leadership position at Coke Development, working with my dearest and oldest mentor, Roger and Paul Koch, who were both benefactors of WashU. But as I'll reference in a few minutes, I've come to realize that comfort is the last thing a driven Olin graduate should ever accept. What's the point to these seemingly trivial, play me a small violin stories? The point is, all of our struggles, impossible decisions, unexpected curveballs are the exact experiences we need to cherish, reflect upon, and learn from. Otherwise, be it personally or professionally, we'll simply keep walking down that same preordained pass that you're now set on graduating from Olin, and it's nearly impossible to break new ground when you're simply fat and happy. My professional and personal breakthroughs, which I know my future will still be full of, have shaped the values and lessons that I respect most in this world now. And I try and ingrain in my company's culture on a daily basis and in my personal lives. Again, all I can hope for today is that one or two of you will listen to the following five pieces of advice, and one or two of those pieces of advice will bring you value. So here they are. Number one of five, listen and then trust your instincts. Trust your instincts over simply moving forward via other people's advice, no matter how wise or influential those people or advice may be. Or, per my graduation story, particularly if those other people are your loving parents. They know you well, you know yourself better. Seek out perspectives, listen to them intently, but once you've gathered trusted perspectives in your career, on your projects, on your life, rely on your abilities and instinct alone to make that decision. No matter how that works out, you can't blame anyone else, and I promise you'll be more fulfilled because of it. Two of five. 
Don't waste energy worrying about things you can't control. This one's tough, as I'm sure you all already know, but time spent worrying about past decisions you've made or other people is fruitless, and it takes away massive amounts of energy that's more productively spent looking forward. My company performs lengthy post-mortem, we call them Monday game tape reviews, after every partnership, development, or investment we make, no matter how successful or unsuccessful they are, and we spend a lot of organized time doing that. Those sessions are what allow us as a team member, to, as a team at a company, to actively improve and grow. But deep reflection should not be confused with worry. Sunk costs are sunk costs. Spend your energy on what you can control. If our journeys aren't fun, what's the point? If it takes Xanax, Klonopin, whatever it takes, just keep those eyes looking forward. Sorry, parents. Three of five. <laughs> Value integrity and protect your integrity over absolutely everything else. Integrity. Integrity is one of the only things that we can truly, personally control in our lives and nobody else can influence. It's one of the only things. Protect it all over all else. Give up all financial opportunities that require you to bend it. They're not worth it. In my short 11 years, I've seen a lot of folks bend their integrity and get destroyed because of it. And look for it in everyone you meet and certainly everyone you work for and with. It's a platitude, but one that I and my company and every individual who I respect truly lives by. It can take an entire career or life to build your reputation, but it literally only takes one dishonest decision that you will be, uh, th that you will be pressured to make at some point to destroy the whole thing. Furthermore, lack of integrity rubs off easily, either tarnishing your reputation from the shrapnel of it or skewing your perspectives until you lose your own sight. When you're working late nights at your upcoming firms and late weekends, you'll find yourself in more of a bubble of the people you're working with than even the bubble of Wash U that we all love so much. And it will change your perspective on things. If you ever witness a, college in those a colleague in those sessions, or particularly a boss, knowingly lack integrity, run fast. And if you don't run fast and want to fight, do it immediately. Again, it is, only, it is one of the only things we can truly control and it will vanish in an instant if you breach it. Four or five, never be satisfied with comfort. Embrace challenge and failures that come with it. Comfort is the enemy of growth. It's a bit cliche nowadays, but again, it's something I meditate on almost a daily basis. You and I are both too young to want comfort. I have a close family member who was the chairman and CEO of a large public company for many years before retirement, and he's with us here today. He likely doesn't know it, but years ago, I asked him to lunch to counsel me on my aforementioned night sweat inducing career move to my current firm. He ended that lunch by offering me with a proposed question instead of advice, which is also good advice. It tipped the scale for me and I sense apply it to every major decision I face in life and in my career. He asked me to ask myself, if I take this risk and I fall flat on my face, will I be any worse than I am today? Most times that answer is no. You can simply rewind and try again from the same platform. But the real value comes when that failure provides you wisdom that you otherwise would not have gained if you did not take that risk and fall flat on your face. Don't be afraid of challenges. Most, if you find yourself feeling comfortable over your first few years post-graduation, please seek a new challenge, whether it be in your team, in your company, in your field, or a different career, and go for it. There's a lot of time ahead of you to rebound or to elevate if you fail. And this is the last one, so stay awake with me. Five of five, ingrain into your soul from this day forward that leadership does not require gray hair. Unfortunately, many times, the grayness of one's hair is perfectly correlated with declining leadership skills. You are already leaders. You're sitting at the graduation of one of the best universities in the country, the number one program. And I appreciate that, by the way, because when I was here, it certainly wasn't. It was close, but you, you've, you've helped value my, my degree quite a bit, so thank you. It's prepared you to lead. I can personally attest to it. Leadership can be learned and developed, and frankly, it's a simple skill to learn the basics of if you put your preconceptions and particularly ego behind you and study it. Look for areas to lead day one of your new jobs, day one, be it within your teams, on a project, on changing a process that your company has been doing for 50 years just because it works, or join outside charitable organizations to try to find leadership opportunities. Please don't fall into the trap that I've seen many of my peers fall into, 
Much more brilliant peers than me sitting at this graduation 11 years ago has fallen into it. They didn't seek and fight for leadership opportunities right out of the gate. It's a skill that even the most seasoned executives constantly try to perfect, and it will open more doors in your professional lives than most any other thing you do. So you have to start exercising it day one. You and your firms will be better off for it. We've only got two minutes left, and it's a grand finale. I'd be remiss not to use this stage to truly welcome you all to the Olin Alumni Network as the Olin board, uh, Alumni Board President. A network is only as strong as the quality, quantity, and engagement of its members, and you're joining a truly tremendous network. Please use it from day one. You will not regret it, I again promise. Whether it be career, career, excuse me, career leads, a desire to give back your talent, or helping the Career Center with mock interviews, now that you all just went through them, or donate a few dollars to help increase our alumni donation participation, which, by the way, is a direct input to national rankings that just got us to number one, most likely. So even $10, it affects the perpetual value of your degrees and selfishly my degree. So give if you can. Or simply scratch that itch to stay connected to a place you love. We welcome and honestly want your involvement, no matter how you choose to connect. Like I said previously, this graduation in the end in, is not the end of the value that WashU provides you. It's the beginning. You've been students for four years, hopefully, I guess, but you'll be an alum for the rest of your lives. Use the resources. The more we help each other, the more value we all gain out of our expensive degrees. Take advantage of the network. It continually provides me with opportunities to connect with students, locate exceptional interns and hires for my firm, and expand my professional and personal network within St. Louis, outside of St. Louis, and outside of this country. It is an open and wide-reaching network. However, it only provides if you ask it to. Never hesitate to call the Alumni and Development Department, and please don't hesitate just to look me up on LinkedIn and call or email me. I'd love to chat with you and try to find a way to get you connected with WashU. Finally, when you do start getting piles of the alumni mail, think about taking up one of those requests or opportunities rather than tossing them aside. This school was built on philanthropy and donations of time. So throw a few bucks in or just sign up for an event. I'm doing this gig for free, by the way. So think of it as a payment for me keeping it under 15 minutes. But make it out to your school, to our school. From the chancellor to little old me, we truly value all alumni support and engagement, no matter how small or no matter how frequent. I look forward to meeting many of you over the coming decades at alumni events. Congratulations, once again, a heartfelt congratulations. Enjoy the celebrations. You've truly earned your position here. And thanks for trying to stay awake with me. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope it was worth some amount of your time. Now let's get on with the ceremonies. Thank you, everyone. Alex, those are great words of wisdom and actually nicely uh, fit with our speaker this morning for those of you who attended about taking a different path, having the courage to be able to do that. So thank you for sharing that. What I'd like to do is for uh, give you a dean's honor today, and I'll just read it out. Present to Alex Ander Borchert in sincere appreciation of your keynote address at the Olin Undergraduate Recognition Ceremony, May 19th, 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can post that on your alumni website. That's right. Well, I'd like to have our student speaker come up now. The class of 2017 student speaker is Miranda Lan. <laughs> Miranda is an organizational behavior and marketing major, originally from Vancouver, Washington. And I was proud to have her in class this last uh, fall. She says her parents are role models and inspire her to use her, her business skills to create a better world. Miranda will begin working for Capital One in July and looks forward to working alongside her Olin alumni peers in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Miranda Lamb.
thank you, Dean Dirks, Dean Malter, and for everyone gathered here today to celebrate the culmination of numerous years of hard work. Alex, in uh, the beginning of your speech, you said you should set up meetings, and I think this speech will be a success if my cap doesn't fall off any time during it. <laughs> okay. Well, I have no doubt in my mind that Owen is a special community here on the WashU campus. We are tight-knit, collaborative, and we have more free food than all the other schools combined. I've come to appreciate, though, more than anything else, that at Olin, the students, faculty, and staff are passionate, and we try our best to find what it is we like to do, what it is we're good at, and then excel at it. In writing this speech, I spent a long time, after finals, I promise, trying to find a theme that would really inspire everyone, and hopefully something that would be relatable to everyone in this room today. I tried nearly every single Google search you could imagine with the keywords graduation speech, inspirational, and how to write, but I don't think that there is a perfect speech out there. So instead, what I will do is tell you this today. As one of nearly 300 Olin undergrads, I'd like to share with you why I feel both uncertain and grateful for this very moment. First, uncertainty. Uncertainty, as I've come to learn, is both a blessing and a curse. As the famous Greek saying goes, the only thing that is constant is change. Um, I stand before you as a soon-to-be graduate who is uncertain about her future. And to be honest, it kind of sucks. Over the last four years, many things in our lives have been constant. We were certain that we'd have at least one group project every single semester, and we were certain there was always one kid in our group who did none of the work. And you know who you are sitting out there. <laughs> also, there was always that one kid who did all of the work, and you definitely know who you are. <laughs> The routines and certainty of our academic lives gave us a sense of psychological safety, but psychological safety doesn't matter if we don't take psychological risks. You'll know when you're practicing risk-taking because you'll feel the fear. Likewise, you know the future is really happening when you start feeling scared. And that's how I feel right now, and maybe how some of you, my peers out there, feel right now as well. We're about to take big risks in our lives, leave the worlds of public and private education we've grown accustomed to, and venture forward. The reality beyond this campus is not set in stone for me, as it likely is not for many of you. The future can seem uncertain and scary, and I think it's absolutely okay to think that. Which brings me to the importance of gratitude. If we can appreciate what's happened in the past and what's happening in the present, we can learn forward and make the future less frightening. Gratitude can put both the best and the worst of things into perspective and build resilience in times of uncertainty. There are countless things I'm grateful for, my family, my friends, my time here at Olin, but the two that stick out to me right now in this moment are the relationships and the perspective that I've built throughout my time here. The relations are, relationships are really a no-brainer. The most common answer to the question, why Wash you or why Owen is the people, of course. So let's all be grateful for the friends who have come into our lives and who have led us into theirs. The friends who take you out to Ibby's when you run out of meal points and still splurge for the sangria. <laughs> the friends who let you share their study room with them, whether you're working hard or hardly working. We are a community that inspires each other to set our sights high and to succeed every single day. The friends that we've made here in Olin and at WashU, maybe your Management 100 group, your study abroad friends, we will all still be friends years from now. And we will always be a community you can lean on for support and encouragement. I am grateful knowing that I can always turn to my Olin friends to celebrate the successes and work through the challenges life throws this way. The perspective is the second thing that I would say I'm very grateful for as an Olin student. Whether you loved or hated FIN 340, OB 360, Accounting 2610, whether you were part of a business fraternity or a social Greek life, sports team, or student government, Olin really encouraged us to view business and also the world holistically. We learned here that everything in business intersects. Every department, every function, and every person matters. And I believe that this understanding can be translated to empathy and caring for other people and the diverse skills and opinions that they embody. And as future business leaders, it is our responsibility to guide our generation with this empathy and with the knowledge that we've learned here at Olin to include others in the conversation and make sure we leave this world a better place than we found it. So what does that really mean for us, class of 2017, after today? Well, we're not done when we receive our diplomas and walk out of Bauer or maybe stand in the Starbucks line for the very last time today. <laughs> stay hungry, stay excited, stay connected, and be change makers. Make sure you care a lot. Care for yourself care for others, and care about the impact we will have as business leaders. Thank you all for the community that you've been for me and for the strength and support that you've shown one another. I'm actually now excited that our futures beyond this ceremony, beyond this graduation, are not certain, because that means we will have a lot more stories to share the next time that we meet. In the meantime, let's stay connected and continue to support one another, 
So when you get a chance today, pull out your phone and remember to support each other and send your friends an endorsement on LinkedIn. <laughs> Congratulations on graduating, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Now, it gives me great pleasure to represent today's graduating Olin BSBA students to present our 2017 Faculty Awards. Our class selected Professor Ignacio Spanda for our very first award because of his passion, both for his classes and for his students. While I did not have the fortune of taking game theory with Professor Spanda, I've talked to many of his students, and they all highly regard him as an educator who's passionate about economics and who's passionate about them learning about economics and enjoying the class by keeping his course relevant and applicable to real-life scenarios. Students describe Professor Esponda as genuinely caring, engaging, and I quote, an A-plus professor. Not only does he make the effort to get to know his students, but he goes out of his way to make sure that they feel supported and that they're learning the material in the class and understanding it well. As such, I'm honored to present the 2017 Reed Teaching Award for an elective class to Professor Ignacio Esponda. Next, our class selected Professor Stacy Thomas for our second award because she single-handedly taught most of us how to communicate more clearly and concisely. I had the pleasure of taking Stacy's class the first semester she taught it and TAing for her ever since. And I'm blown away with the thought and care she puts into proving her class every single semester. Stacy is the kind of professor who will learn all of her students' names in the first two weeks of class and she'll know all of their stories by the end of the semester. Many of us go back to her in the years to follow because we respect and trust her to give us real constructive feedback. I know I'm not the only one who thinks, what would Stacy think about this email before pressing send? <laughs> and that's just one of the many takeaways we will have because of her and because of her class as we go on to our lives after college. I'm honored to present the 2017 Reed Teaching Award for a required class to Professor Stacy Thomas. Thank you and congratulations on graduating. Miranda, thank you for your thoughtful remarks and for presenting the Reed Teaching Awards to our faculty. I'd also like to congratulate Professors Thomas and Sponda. And again, please, one more time, join me in commending these great teachers for the work and the high standards they have. Now I'd like to invite Associate Dean Steve Malter to the lectern to help me recognize the academic achievement. If you'd like to follow along, please note the complete list of honorees and description of each award is detailed in your program. Dean Malter. Good morning. Well, actually, good afternoon. We will get you out of here before we have to say good evening. My name is Steve Malter, and I've had the privilege of working with our undergraduate class during their time here at Olin, and it is my pleasure to present the awards to the class of 2017 today. Jude Jingo is a recipient of the John W. Boyer Award in Finance. He is being recognized for having the greatest potential for success in a finance career. Jude also receives the Delta Sigma Pi Scholarship Key. We have two recipients for the scholarship key today. This award is presented to the graduating students with the highest academic average over four years in the study of business administration. Congratulations, Jude. The other recipient is Allie Hartenstein. Congratulations to Allie and Jude. <laughs> Jessica Prusik is this year's recipient of the International Business Student Award that is awarded to the graduate who shows the greatest potential for a career in international business. Unfortunately, Jessica could not join us today, but we hope she's watching online. Congratulations, Jessica. <laughs> 
This year's Powell Nealon Prize is presented to Adrian Lee. The prize is awarded to the graduate with the strongest academic achievement in the area of operations and manufacturing management. We have two winners for our next award. Michael Bannon and Brody Rausch both received the Arthur M. Seltzer Accounting for outstanding work in the area of accounting. Congratulations to both of you. Andrew Glantz is this year's recipient of the Joseph W. Toll Prize awarded to the graduate with the strongest academic achievement and the most potential in the area of organizational leadership. <laughs> Ricardo Perez is the recipient of the 2017 Undergraduate Marketing Award for outstanding achievement in the field of marketing. We have, another pro we have another tie today for the Loeb Prize in Leadership. Congratulations to Lauren Berger and Lillian Ross. They have earned the Loeb Prize in Leadership, awarded to the graduates who have shown leadership in undergraduate activities related to the Olin Business School and who have maintained excellence in scholastic achievement. Congratulations, ladies. Ethan Rinchik receives the K. Rowe, Rowe Memorial Award given in recognition of his contributions to Washington University and the St. Louis community through extracurricular or volunteer activities as judged by his classmates. This year we have two recipients of the Outstanding Athlete Award. These two graduates have exhibited strong leadership ability and sportsmanlike conduct in the respective sports of soccer and football. First, I will call Katherine Chandler to the stage. <laughs> Katie's majored in marketing with a minor in psychology and has been a leader of the national championship Bears women's soccer team for four years. As captain, she led the team to the Division III national championship for the first time in school history. Katie of Forward won the NCAA championship most outstanding offensive player. She started all 24 games in her final season and recorded a team high 12 goals, four assists for 28 points. She was named the UAA Offensive Athlete of the Week four times in her final season. Katie concludes her college soccer career ranked second in WashU history with 16 game winning goals and seventh with 37 goals and 87 points. Katie was also named the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Division III All-American team this year. Congratulations, Katie. Our second athlete is J.J. Tomlin, who majored in marketing with a minor in the business of sports. He is a three-time All-University Athletic Association and two-time All-Southern Athletic Association honoree he has concluded his career as the most decorated quarterback in WashU history with school records in completion percentages, completions, passing attempts, passing yards, total offense, and touchdowns. 83 if you're counting. You would have been a good fantasy investment over the years, huh? <laughs> Off the field, JJ is Washington University Student Athlete Advisory Committee President and also serves as Vice President of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's been active with the Special Olympics, food drives, shoe drives, and various service projects in the area. Congratulations, JJ. <laughs> the Dean's Special Service Award is presented this year to five undergraduates. Let me begin with Colton Calandrella. Colton, <laughs> sorry, a pause for the cheers. Colton has served the Olin and St. Louis communities in many capacities, from the formation of the Olin Diversity and Inclusion Committee to serving as the Vice President of the Olin Business Council and his participation in projects for the CEO. Colton leads by example and is a role model for other students. He is graduating with a major in Economics, Strategy, and Entrepreneurship and a minor in Latin American Studies. Congratulations, Colton. Next, we have four leaders from our Olin Business Council, Ricardo Perez, Lillian Ross, Danny, Daniel Schlein, and James Soldati. 
All of these awardees have held meaningful leadership positions in the Olin Business Council since they joined campus, taking leadership roles over the last three years. Each of them will receive a Dean's Special Service Award today. Ricardo Perez created the Urban Youth Startup Challenge, a program that is purpose is to share information about attending college to St. Louis area high school students. And the Olin Business Council and the undergraduate program are committed to continuing this program. Congratulations, Ricardo. Lillian Ross is the first woman to be elected OBC president in more than a decade. She has initiated several efforts to build school spirit and encourage her undergraduate classmates and women to take on responsibilities. Congratulations, Lily. It says Daniel, but Danny Schlein has been the, old, the council's vice president of finance for two years and has managed to keep the group's budget within all the rules and regulations of student union. So thank you. Congratulations, Danny. And Jimmy Soldati led a rebranding effort of OBC last year to focus on three pillars, building connections, developing professionals, and advocating for students. He also advocated for Olin as a member of the university's undergraduate council. Congratulations, Jimmy. It is rare for seniors to remain actively involved in student government throughout their last semester, but these students have been exceptions, and their exceptional service to Olin is appreciated. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> Lastly, the Taylor Outstanding Service Award is given to graduates who have participated in three or more Taylor Community Consulting projects to enable positive change in the St. Louis community. The Taylor Outstanding Service Award goes to three undergraduates today, Colton Colandrella, Miranda Land, and Esteban Reck. Before the presentation of the degree candidates, I would like to spotlight several additional honors and distinctions to be recognized today that are outlined in your program. Any graduate whose academic excellence has earned them the recognition of summa cum laude, magna cum laude, honors in management, or beta gamma sigma will be noted as each graduate crosses the stage. As outlined in the program, these merits are awarded to our most outstanding students and are signified by honor cords worn with their robes. I now invite my colleagues Paige LaRose and Chris Presley to join Professor Dirks and I in presenting the graduating class. The first members of the BSBA class of 2017 that I invite to cross the stage today are our student marshals. Yes, I said marshals. We have two graduates who have earned a 4.0 grade point average. Congratulations, Allie and Jude. <laughs> Allie. Allie Hartenstein, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Jude Jingo, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Miranda Lan. Adrian Lee. Michael Bannon. Brody Rausch. Andrew Glantz, magna cum laude. And we encourage family and friends to cheer as loudly as you'd like as your graduates and friends cross the stage. Ricardo Perez, magna cum laude, honors and management. Lauren Berger. Lillian Ross, honors and management. Ethan Rinchik. Katherine Chandler. J. 
JJ Tomlin. Colton Calandrella, magna cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Daniel Schlein, honors and management. James Soldati, honors and management. Esteban Reck. James Larkin Smith, honors and management. Ross Fine, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Joshua Katz, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Lauren Kliska. Ubinav Kumar. Robert Stern. Michael Berkowitz. Austin Feinstein. Grant Goldman. Robert Berkey. <laughs> Julie Cole. Risha Ruthor. Cameron Moore. Nicole Nemec. Shrey Agarwal. Alexander Bolyu, magna cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Adam Haber, magna cum laude. Kara Silverman. Rebecca Zerner. Jessica Drosner. Jessica Gersten. Emily Levine. Oliver Fang. Tyler Friedman, magna cum laude. Morgan Hess. Brandon Fink. Trent Hamoud. Mauricio Pimentel. Grant Kobe, who will be joined by his father, Professor Kobe of the Law School. How are you going to follow that? <laughs> Joseph Canuti. <laughs> Nicholas Williams. <laughs> Ross Arkin. <laughs> Emery Witt. <laughs> Samuel Hum. Jack Wilson. <laughs> Philip Dorenzo. <laughs> Theodore Drucker. <laughs> Ariel Lowenstein. <laughs> Andrew Schmidt. <laughs> Amanda Gallup. Rebecca Rubin. <laughs> Stephanie Abadi. <laughs> Jenny Yoon, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sung Ho Kim. <laughs> Merrill Hollander. Ariel Koblener. <laughs> Darian Kubar. 
Catherine Ahn. Rachel Hung. Rebecca Dye. Jessica Landsberg, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Jake Price. Grant Baltes. Makun Morari. Christopher Campbell, magna cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Eduardo Jacobo, summa cum laude, honors and management, beta gamma sigma. Arpitha Hayes, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Matthew Liu. Justin Morrell. Lauren Carlos. Aaron Polrice. Hallie Steinberg. Jeremy Leon. Joshua Bluestein, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Varun Parikh, honors and management. Andrew Mipos, magna cum laude. David Crane. Theodore Friedman. Jacob Weiss. Dylan Minnick. Daniel Villardo. Sophie Gunter. Collier Bulshan. Oliver Gallup. Benjamin Horowitz. Mingji Lim. Shishuan Bob Lu. John Carswell. Matthew Schiller. Ryan Smith. Jack Glick. Max Buster. James Marcus. Noah Watts Russell. Michael Yorkin. Casey Zhang. Victoria DeStasi. Eleanor Milks. Scott Myers, magna cum laude. Brandon Sutton. Yunsu Kim, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Min So Choi. Jeremy Bush. Matthew Deutsch, magna cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Rebecca Brody. Henry Cummings. Jia Shin Lee. Ting Yi Zoa, magna cum laude. Cassandra Abel. Daniel Hirsch. Thomas Barker. 
Zachary Eagle. Jacob Helfrich. Stephen Yates. Eric Chow. Varun Patel. Maxwell Allborn. Jeremy Ben. Carly Bloom. James Harvey. Samuel Silver. Suryiz Ravi. Matthew Mayfield. Shachith Sirwanther. Shea Gould. Daniel Marshall. Daniel Cohen. Haolun Zeng. Sheng Shong Jin. Yishuan Wei. Scarlett Ho. Lauren Roji. Elise Hess. Maria Ahern. Catherine Elliott. Carly Stern. Amanda Ross. Rebecca Farber. Chloe Baker, summa cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Gabrielle Schenk. Jenna Burns. Dana Goldman. Jacqueline Gordon. Taylor Quaite. Reed Petty. Rachel Pulek. Susanna Dang, summa cum laude, honors and management, beta gamma sigma. Andres Manzanares. Wilson Ma. Jackson Smith, honors and management. Samuel Shapiro Klein, magna cum laude, beta gamma sigma. Daniel Flynn. Annie Shi, Rulu Lu, Van Zhang, Bradley Schlesinger, Catherine Williams, Felice Siegel, Zachary Schuler. Joshua Moscow, Magnum Kulade. <laughs> Rohan Puth in Ingadi. <laughs> Sterling Rollins. <laughs> Sheng Yi Li. <laughs> Dennis Xiong. <laughs> Justin Cho. Unjin Naryan. <laughs> Daniel Mazor, Magna Cum Laude. Hugh Appleton Ragsdale IV. <laughs> Renee Babior. 
Bronwyn Bigham. Noreen Musa. Daisy Wang. Conrad Devon. Curtis Black. Kevin Hammerlin. Michael Bragman. Matthew Page. Christopher McKee, Jr. Henry Giles. William Cramsey. Nicholas Golan. Peter Quirk. Daniel Nowak. Catherine Plaster, Sumo Cum Laude, Beta Gamma Sigma. Melissa Fradkin. Isabella Newberg. Jared Kramer. Nina G. Mai Smith. Hannah Pearl. Nina Gerson. Catherine Odom. Sophia Tron. Lindsey Green. Ophelia Chen. Connie Lee. Christopher Elkins. Emma Fichtel. Emily Coppy. Rebecca Manning. Amanda Leary. Christina Yunshan Ye, Sumo Cum Laude, Honors and Management, Beta Gamma Sigma. Wen Yong Feng, Magna Cum Laude. Luke Summerlin. Genevieve Pexock. Paulina Gallagher. Rebecca Cohen. Sabrina Bidas. Jonathan Goldstein. David Gummins. Gabrielle Bookbinder. Amy Liu. Emily Lee. Hannah Graves. Maz Emu. Vishruth Reddy. Hao Ming Wang. Ethan Brodeur, Honors and Management. Benjamin Rosencrantz, Magna Cum Laude, Honors and Management. Jack Hoots. Adam Kaminsky. Ming Chen, Magna Cum Laude. Maximilian Suter. Alexis Sprague. Julia Marks, Magna Cum Laude. Cheryl Huang. Baba Sharma, Magna Cum Laude, Beta Gamma Sigma. Patrick Shea, Magna Cum Laude. Diego Rivera, Magna Cum Laude. El Bacanzo, Summa Cum Laude, Beta Gamma Sigma. Colin Wells. Sarah Jackson. 
Veronica Jong. Stephen Huber. David Bondarenko. Aditya Demaraju. Shannon Driscoll. Lucy Wang. Michelle Yuan. Michelle Zhang. Victoria Zhang. Samuel Zhang. Samuel Zhang. Nick Wong. Tian Chi Zhu, Magna Cum Laude, Honors and Management. Mary Brent Brown. Shui Ching Zhang. Han Chiu Zhou. Hao Shu Xiu, Honors and Management. Ari Moses. Kevin Pong. Max Yanowitz, Magda Kamati, Beta Gamma Signa. Lyra, Lyra Reyes Ruiz, Honors and Management. And joined by his father, Professor Biswas, Vikram Biswas. Gary Chang, Silk Kim, Imran Moontots, Natalie Rawson, Sarah Hollingsworth, Kathy Liu. Ella Cooney. <laughs> Chin Nguyen, Magna Cum Laude, Vega Gamma Sigma. Clara Oivry Stewarts. <laughs> Chin Wei Shin. Atul Saran Arthan. Andrew Freeland. <laughs> Zach Miller, Magna Cum Laude, Beta Gamma Sigma. Matthew Smith. Hunter Wasser. Professor Dirks, the largest ever graduating class in Olin's history, the class of 2017. Pretty exciting, pretty exciting. The most exciting days, as you know, are that very first day when you enter the uh, Washington University, and then the very last day when you walk out. They're equally nervous for different reasons, but again, congratulations to all of you. Graduates, on behalf of our faculty and staff, I wish you all the best. As Alex mentioned, you are now alumni of Washington University and the Olin Business School. You be As, 
As you move in this, into this new capacity, you walk out into the world as the face of the Olin Business School. And so we know that you're going to represent us in the very best light. So go out, make us proud, make us great. Congratulations again to all of you. So this concludes our graduation recognition ceremony. We'll ask the audience to please remain seated until the stage participants have led the recessional parade out of the field house. We invite you to follow the group and then join Olin's newest graduates in Knight Hall and Bauer Hall for a reception.